Okay, I think we're ready to start. Um, uh, go ahead. Now John uh, is probably going to be doing a little bit more of the speech, uh, but I want to share my feelings about Doom through interpretive dance. La, 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 la. <laughs> no, <laughs> it doesn't work. Um, so it's been 17 years since Doom was released. It's kind of funny that we've never done a post-mortem anywhere on this game, which is kind of crazy. Um, but now we are here to do it. Uh, and, uh, and so we're, what we're going to do is kind of go through the development of the game on a month-by-month -month basis, uh, starting... We're actually going to start uh, about a year before we started on Doom to kind of foreshadow some things in the future. Okay. There's a little bit of volume. Um, okay, so we'll start in December of 1991. Uh... Actually, yeah, okay, so it actually it wasn't December, was it? It was like, <laughs> anyway, it's like, it's as like, far as you know, this is December it's 1991. August 1991, <laughs> and uh, we moved id Software to Madison, Wisconsin, where I went to college, and we went, they, we visited in the mid midsummer, and the place was great, just like that picture there, it was awesome, lush, green, everyone having fun. So then we just, we moved the, we moved the, the whole company, which was only four people at that time, uh, and then when we got there, you know, nice that's, that's kind of what happened to us. <laughs> and so we couldn't even go outside anymore. We had to kind of stay inside. Uh, so we were working on Commander Keen at that time. And, uh, and during that, you know, uh, last half of 1991, we basically saw that there was this computer called the Next Computer that was, uh, that was created by Steve Jobs' company. And, uh, and it looked really, really interesting. It was, it was an amazing work, workstation. And uh, we basically, during December, uh, kind of finished Commander Keen, and we went on our, like, two-week vacation. And, but it, John Carmack didn't go on vacation. He's going to stay in program, especially he wanted to program a, a next computer. So he ordered a next computer, COD, uh, but he didn't have a car. And it's snowing and freezing. So, so, so that's John going through the snow to the bank to get <laughs> to get the money for COD. So when the guy shows up, he can pay him the eleven thousand dollars. And then we got finally got our next computer. Uh, and that was in December of 1991. We start working on Wolfenstein 3D, and uh, we really just kind of mess around with the next. Uh, it wasn't until like the summer, like half a year later, we actually used the next computer to do the uh, the hint manual for, for <laughs> Wolfenstein and like some Commander Keen brochures. So. Yeah, it was a lot of, worth a lot there for us. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were planning on using it later. Uh, it was it turned out to be a very important computer for our company. Um, so dear, right after Wolfenstein shipped, uh, we uh, were contacted by a company named Imagineer. And they wanted a Super Nintendo version of, uh, of Wolfenstein. And so we were very excited about getting our game on, on a console. And so we, uh, we hired a guy to, to start working on a contract because we, you know, we got other games that we got to make. <laughs> All right. So now <laughs> it's November of 1992. And uh, we, had, we had a year... Previous to this, November of 1991, actually shipped our, our uh, I think it was our third, third FPS. Um, it was our first texture map game called Catacomb 3D, and uh, and so it shipped a, a year before uh, this time. But th but after this point, we decided that we're going to make another FPS. And surprisingly, to some people, <laughs> <laughs> surprisingly, uh, Doom was actually the fifth id software FPS. Those are the other games that we had done that were sh that were shooters. Um, yeah, originally uh, Hover Tank One was just colored walls that you kind of drove your tank through, and at that time it was kind of a harsh creative uh, environment to make an, a, an environment come alive in. So I like I would put a a green cube, and that's a tree, essentially, in my mind, you know. <laughs> and uh, Catacombs 3D actually had textures on the walls, and that gave it a lot more sense of space and a lot more fun, and you can cast your magic spells and blow things apart and stuff. And then the others you probably know. Spear Destiny is a sequel to, to Wolfenstein, by the yeah. way. Um, so we basically start working on uh, some of the tools for the next FPS. We start working on Doom. Um, 
programmers in the audience might recognize the, the acronym WAD, which stands for Where's All the Data? <laughs> well, that's, that's actually made after the fact. Uh, we were in like a cheap apartment uh, called La, La Prada, and Carmack was downstairs working on stuff, and we had used you know lumps uh, in the previous games and stuff. And he, I was working upstairs doing the Doom Bible, and he called up and said, I need an extension, like, what's a bunch of lumps? And I said, a wad? You know, <laughs> or someone like said, yeah, that works, okay. A wad of lumps. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of people started using that, and then the, the LucasArts, or the... Yeah, and then Lucas, yeah, Dark Forces later uh, named their files gobs, so everyone was kind of coming up with another <laughs> three-letter three, three extension. Yeah. Um, and so after you know, we were in these apartments and kind of putting together the file formats for, for Doom, uh, it then finally moves to the Black Cube in Mesquite, which would, you know, was just down the, down the street from the, uh, the apartment complex. And, um, and thank you, Google, for uh, providing a picture of Bounty's <laughs> Tower. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which there's no other one on the Internet. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so we basically start thinking about, like, what is, what is Doom going to be? What is, what is this next game? Kind of, you know, it started with the name. We played a lot of D&D <laughs> for years, you know, years before we started making Doom. And so we decided that this was going to be one of our, like, D&D-inspired games. Uh, Carmack was really excited to do a game that had demons in it. And, uh, you know, we all agreed. Yeah. We, we just did Nazis, so uh, <laughs> demons are like, whatever. Evil? Oh, well... <laughs> <laughs> what else is evil? <laughs> so, that was kind of easy, you know. <laughs> um, so then, Social games. <laughs> Tom starts, Tom starts uh, working on the Doom Bible right after we move in, and then he finished it at the very end of November of 1992. Um, and uh, and it was basically a whole kind of a design document for a lot of the game, the, a lot of the sketches of like where all the levels are in the game and. Um, the names of stuff. Progressions you, know. you go through, lists all the tools, all that kind of stuff. I mean, you can look it out on the internet. This is, this is kind of part of the, the beginning of the design doc here to kind of say, like, what, what Doom is. And, uh, you know, there were a lot of, we were, we were coming up with all these ideas for the technology of the game and, like, what it's going to be. And, and uh, we felt, like, really sure before making the game what it probably was going to turn out to, to be like. Like, we knew what the, uh, the technology advances were going to be. Um, we had an idea that we were going to be doing some dark subject matter. It was going to be like not bright halls with Nazis in them, but like dark, scary, uh, you know, hallways. Uh, I call <laughs> Lots it lot of halls. Scary, dark, fast. Is basically <laughs> the game. We made a lot of halls because of Tom's last name. Yeah, but, you know. Um, so the theme. So part of the <laughs> part of the design was, uh, you know, Tom wanted to do uh, like what we'd done in Wolfenstein uh, progression that was like level to level progression. Yeah, like I done. mean. Yeah, like people really expected that from Wolfenstein, and I think that was not the place to innovate. Essentially, uh, I think that was a really good. I, c I can complete a chunk, you know, and, and perhaps frustratingly complete a chunk, but I can you know get there, and boom, I have a success. And that was a good sense of accomplishment that was very important to this kind of game. And then, and then uh, John was thinking about the technology and what he could do with the tech, and he was like, there was. You know, he didn't really, he was starting to lay down some of the basic data structures, but he also was thinking big. So John wanted one big world. He just wanted, like, <laughs> one big level. You know? <laughs> Everybody's going to run you around could, the level. You could, like, see through doors. And then, <laughs> so then it was like, okay, well, okay, it's one big level. And we're doing sort of science fiction. Let's look at the data there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> science fiction with demons and stuff like that. Well, well, let's make a big base, you know, and then a lot of places to go and it's kind of a sense of place and so on. So we start calculating, you know, how much memory are we going to use uh, for this game? Because which they are doing, while well, I'm doing about a month of work on this big world and all these things and little nuances and and we're like calculating the sprite sizes, uh, map sizes. And there's this cool like computer room, and there's all these, all these tunnels. And we're like, there's no way that this is going to work. I mean, we don't have enough memory. We it's can kind barely of weird, dangerous slide. We barely go above you know, one megabyte. The lava right? there. And, <laughs> And like this, you so know, we're like, like, and you recognize real we have places. A new design. And hey, demons dude, come out. Like new design. What? We're gonna just kind of do levels. So I, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> I remember something <laughs> about that a month ago. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that was you know not fun. So Tom was you know not very happy about I, that. I uh, uh, I feel something snapping. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Mentally. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like uh, when we were in Wolfenstein. I had, since it was something that was uh, not an elegant part of the engine, I had to really, really, really fight for push walls. 
but I, it's like you're going to be walking through things, opening doors. You got to have some secrets, you know. I'm like, I grew up, you know, playing Mario and stuff like that. I want, I want secrets, and so I really, really fought for football. I finally got in, and it's exciting. So that was kind of like snap zero of like, you know, why am I fighting for something that would make the game so fun? And then sort of like, what was that month of work that was lost? So, <laughs> but in in that yeah. sense. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? I have. Uh, in that sense, I mean, Carmack was was uh, trying to get the best technology out there and, and what he could, the best way he can innovate. And I was trying to do the same and just like that kind of flash heads a bit. Yes. So now we'll focus on December. We're all working. We know that like, you know, half the month is gone for vacations and stuff. Even though we're doing Doom and, and it's exciting, we're still, you know, human and everybody should be taking vacation. Everybody. <laughs> Everybody. In, but at Christmas. Uh, you know, for people. Go. So here's a picture so, of Tom with hair, and, uh, you know, he's he's using... <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks, everybody. I'm, uh, <laughs> I've lost my glasses. Well, I'll never see them. Um, by the way, as advice to any of you, if you ever invent anything, just go get a patent on it. Regardless, because... Copyright. Because uh, at this time... I was at the desk and I was kind of, man, my, my wrists are kind of sore. So I had my girlfriend sew this <laughs> three years before computer wrist pads came out. And uh, that's Tom kind of always <laughs> been a long regret of mine. <laughs> but uh, could have been rich. Uh, <laughs> anyway, but uh, you can, I, I, my wrists were happy. That's all that's important. <laughs> Anyone could see... Uh, Perhaps there's an Altic Lansing speaker on the right. This is all ancient technology. Uh, but the next computer was actually uh, like a Mac right now. You know, it's basically the same operating system that you're using right now with, uh, with, with the uh, Mac over it, with the Mac UI on top of it. And uh, thanks, Pepsi, for sponsoring this slide. Yeah. <laughs> the nice old calculator, for some reason, is using that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so then we move to January. Uh, January, we were beginning making the game, and there were, you know, with with us, these games never have like pre-production where we like draw a bunch of concepts and then kind of vet things. <laughs> you know, when we make something, it goes in the game. That's just the way it is. So, so we immediately start uh, creating the technology, and we start creating the the artwork, and we're very confident that what we're making is going to be pretty awesome. And so we put out a press release. In January, as we basically begin making the game, uh, telling the world how revolutionary the game is going to be, <laughs> and and uh, the press release had like here's the the big features that we had at the end of the press release, and each of these features in the real press release, which you can like Google on the internet, has a whole bunch of explanation behind it, and probably uh, three or four of those didn't even make it into the game. <laughs> Don't do a press release before your game is actually yeah, there's a, out. There was a gardening section that just really didn't fit. Yeah, so. it was like decades later. It was <laughs> um, then you know we we get into February. That's when we actually start making art. Um, at, we, we were trying to do new things, so uh, instead of just like drawing you know pixels in deluxe paint uh, and making the the art that way, Adrian, who was a really amazing pure artist, he would draw the actual characters and then we he started making them in clay modeling them in clay and we had a next computer that had a video camera uh, that was set up to capture the the monsters as they were put on like a lazy susan that could rotate eighths we had like a post that would mark off eighths and uh, and so we would take a kind of a, a picture of it and uh, and run it through a program called the uh, well, yeah, they, they said, what's a name? We're, like, putting stuff in, and, like, little th like separate things are coming out, like uh, pallets and stuff like that. Well, I just said, like, Fuzzy Pumper Pallet Shop or something. Yeah. And it stuck, so. That was, that was the name of the tool that we, that we made to take these 16-bit, uh, you know, images through a video camera and palletize them into VGA's 256 colors, the Fuzzy Pumper Pallet Shop. So uh, Adrian only did, like, a few of these clay models, and then that was it. There's no more. He's not doing that anymore. Because every time you can animate them, the clay just rips. Because <laughs> we had to light them, so when you light clay, then it goes... The, yeah, it was... It's all over. It was new and weird, so we kind of stopped doing that. Um, 
we meet, you know, we basically got the uh, the engine up and running pretty quickly, you know, through throughout January and then into into just the very beginning of February. And we took some screenshots, uh, and uh, actually we made a bunch of alphas and stuff while we were making the game. And how many of you have actually seen Doom alphas? Not that many people. Cool, so you'll get to see them. <laughs> All those hands will be raised in about two minutes. Um, so we have uh, the first level that, uh, that Tom was working on. Uh, actually got in the game as E2M7, uh, but it was supposed to be like the first level in the game. But... We had a different UI. And that was the first crate maze ever made in the game. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> but part of that was um, basically John was worried about like too many polys in the environment, you know, because he wanted fast, 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 and then really have a blazing fast game. So I kind of made crate maze and things like that that were more orthogonal and, and, and a lot, very occlusive, so it would be faster, faster, and faster. So we had, you know, we were experimenting with UI. We had, like, that's Tom's basic UI that he drew himself. And then the other one, was it? I, I'm available for art duties later. Uh, <laughs> was was there uh, the other UI? Was it done by Adrian? Uh, the second one is done by Adrian. Oh, no, I think I did most of that. He did the shell and I did the text. Oh, okay. Uh, this is my girlfriend's chainsaw. It's a Macaulay <laughs> Eager Beaver. It's sitting... Uh, I used to be sitting on one of my arcade machines, but I sold it, so now it's sitting in my garage. Uh, and if you come over, you can like go like that. But, <laughs> the doom, the doom but it's uh, kind of drippy and and stuff. It's an old chainsaw; it doesn't work anymore. So, so you can see there, there's uh, like a power cable going to the video camera that was used to digitize the actual chainsaw, and uh, and so all the actual weapons that you saw in Doom were just toys that we bought at Toys R Us, and we just kind of held them in front of the video camera and took a snapshot. And uh, we only had so many toys. I think it was like three or four. So we just kind of took pieces and kind of slammed them together in deluxe paint and kind of edited them and stuff. So like the plasma gun and the BFG are kind of the same the same weapon toy. Yeah. Um, the lower res you are, the better art you can do. So <laughs> <laughs> it was fine for that time. That's not the, the actual shotgun. cap gun. Yeah. It was a Dakota, the Tootsie Toy Dakota cap gun. Uh, we didn't actually play with these uh, toys at work. We were just really busy working. <laughs> and at this time, basically, Carmack, you know, really wanted efficient spaces. So he says, get books on military stuff. It's basically, you know, give me c cement buildings, you know, bunkers, very, very squarish things and so on. It'll really run fast. It'll be very efficient, you know. And I was like, okay. And then went over and looked at various things like this. That were not very inspiring. Yeah, they're kind of <laughs> kind of block. You know, it's sort of like uh, that movie. You know, it's boxy but good. Well, you know, it's not that great. So, so you know, so Tom made a bunch of levels that were a bunch of cement blocks, basically, with some other textures put on it, and they just they weren't that, that fun to to go into because yeah. it was like corridors with rooms that you kind of go into, and you know. Uh, yeah. It might make sense when you're playing a game where, you know, hey, demons have taken over a military base, so make it look like a military base and have demons sitting in the rooms. But flow-wise, it just was no fun. It was bizarro. So yeah. uh, so it wasn't that cool. But we actually made a, uh, we kind of made a demo, our first pre-alpha of the game. And uh, that's what we have here. Hopefully it'll play correctly. Um, the lens for our rendering that we did back then was great. Yeah, you know, lens flutter. Over awesome. the text. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, Evil Unleashed was our subtitle back then. Uh, and so this was basically the first level that we made using the data structures we created and DoomEd, which was the tool that I wrote to create the levels. And uh, and you can see the, the second gen UI there uh, with, like, auto map in the top right and... And this was the first time the monsters were rotating in the, in the engine. Yeah, and again, the u interface was made sort of larger, so there'd be less actual screen real estate to render. Again, it was a sort of performance thing. It's going to be faster if there's, you know, like sort of 60, 70% of the screen to render. But it doesn't look that cool when uh, most of your screen is taken <laughs> up with a bunch of UI crap. It's, it's kind of like old school, like, like, a, like a game, like the System Shock or something, where it's yeah. important to have an interface around you because you're physically doing things like that. But here, you're just like, it's in a raw environment. And it doesn't really... Yeah, drive. I want to see his head, you know. So, so, um, so we, you know, we had the UI there. We could actually put a UI in the game, see it's not working too well, take it out. And, yeah, and there were items at this time. You notice on the screen, I believe there's a 
a sandwich, both a sandwich and a heart of Lothar <laughs> on the same screen. There were a lot of, uh, like the captain's hand was a key to a door, and yeah. so there's a lot of esoteric sort of kind of more items. More like adventure -y kind of things, since it was one large world originally. Yep. Um, let's see, is this the same? For some reason, it's doing the same thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, March. Finally get past February. Um, in March... Strange thing happened. In March, something interesting happened. While we're making the game. So 20th Century Fox contacted us, because we did Wolfenstein, which was a pretty fast game. Um, and, uh, and they thought that we would be the right team to make Aliens the game. And so we already have a technology running, you know, we're, we're ready to start running with Doom, and, uh, and they kind of stop us, because we all love aliens. Yeah, uh, especially and, Adrian. Yeah, especially Adrian. So, you know, the, the shapes of the monsters. They, they, you know, we had Giger books all over the place in the art room. So... Um, in the bathroom, you know, just... Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> and so... <laughs> well, that means, but... Uh, we talked about well, it for half an hour. That's about it. It was like, hey guys, here's a really awesome opportunity. We talked about it and we're like, you know what? I don't want to give up creative control on this game. You know, this could be something that's like really original. But we do like the idea of running away from, you know, we we're talking about demons already. So it's like, well, it'll be kind of, you know, alien ish. <laughs> um, sci fi, but, sci fi with demons. The, the mix of science and sort of mythos and stuff like that, it was one of the true powerful things, the, the juxtaposition of that. Yeah, if you're in space, you kind of expect fighting aliens, but you don't expect fighting hell. So that was, <laughs> <you> know, <things laughs> that was something out. we thought was going to be cool. So we decided, let's not do the aliens attacking the space marine. Let's do the hell demons attacking the space marine. That'd be more original. <laughs> so, it was back then. <laughs> really? So then we start doing, uh, I'm working on this level, which is the second level of the game, uh, E1M2, and you can see the horrible, uh, you know, that wall texture with the brown crap on it and the red stripe. Uh, but I was, like, having to explore, like, forget the cement square, you know, rooms with the, you know, the hallways at 90 degrees and stuff. I wanted, I wanted shapes that were more interesting. And you can see these are, like, real kind of early textures, but I was trying to, to make... A, a, you know, a level that didn't feel realistic, but you could still kind of identify it as a, as a place that might be military base, you know, because you're, you're kind of at a, at a science station on a, on a moon. So, uh, so I wanted it to be more interesting to explore. So that's where I started to play around with um, lots, of, lots of contrast in, in room heights and contrast in lighting. And because the engine does, does uh, you know, really great lighting, in fact, on this, um, on this slide, uh, this engine, the Doom engine did something that I don't know uh, many other engines do. I think the build engine did it, but it does what's called diminished lighting, where the light gets darker automatically through the engine as it tries to render off into the distance, which means that you have a game that's just automatically scary. You don't even have to really try. You just kind of just draw some stuff, make the light a little bit, you know, medium and it's just dark in the distance and you can have like a, a really bright a bright bright light in the background to, to create silhouettes of stuff so the doom engine was really amazing for creating scary spaces because it just made it scary automatically um, and then so then I made this room which I don't think to you guys is very impressive looking but uh, back then this was the room that really changed the look of, of the game because uh, this was the for, before all that other stuff that you saw. This was really like the room that showed, hey, we, we can have like high ceilings with, you know, banks of computers up, uh, you know, higher than the player, and um, and show like a real, you know, how high can this can this get? What kind of scale can I get in this game? This was almost one of these. We're kind of defining the possible scale of the game, and this is one one way that we're doing it through this room. Yeah, it's a very important difference in that most games which is kind of where we started, are doing a very functional, oh, I could be here in this space, there's a console that I could use kind of thing, where this was kind of an abstraction or a, a, a different, almost a, a artistic choice to, to, to just elevate and, and make things grow and be huge and big and different. And, and that was, like, this room is like the start of something, like, very large that really defined Doom, and that was brilliant by John. Yeah, just the abstract uh, level design instead of trying to be realistic is really what this room started. Yeah. 
Um, and so we basically, everybody loved it. The artists came in and were like, that's it, man. So that's, that's it. The game is, the, the level design uh, is, is set. You know, basically, we're going to be doing the abstract stuff. But then, disaster struck. <laughs> what happened? We all had to stop working on Doom. It's yeah. so drama-filled, this whole game. <laughs> the finale of Days of Our Lives. Yeah. <laughs> the Super Nintendo version that we had got, uh, gotten a guy to work on was not finished, and Imagineer was not pleased. <laughs> it had been, um, you know, since, the, I think, the summertime, so it had been, like, about nine months, and they hadn't heard anything from us, and we're like, oh, what? <laughs> you know, it, oh, that guy was working on the port, <laughs> and we couldn't get a hold of the guy, and, like, it was, it was, it was uh, you know, it was a nightmare situation because we couldn't, we couldn't get it done, basically, with somebody else, and so... And so basically we stopped working on Doom right in the middle kind of and basically ported Wolfenstein to the Super Nintendo. And so the whole team jumped on it. Artists jumped on art, you know, just like, stop Doom. Um, and, like uh, I, I have a programming degree and like I've been doing design for a long time, but I pulled that out and like did the bonus screen where all the junk bounces around <laughs> in the screen at the end. It's just, everybody's like, help, you know, we, we got to get, get done with up. this thing. We got to get back on Doom. Uh, we wanted to ship at Christmas, so uh, so we all jumped on it, and it took us like three weeks to just blast out the the port, um, and that's including all of the you know put rats in there and green blood and all of, you know. Yeah, that for stuff. some reason Nintendo didn't like you know like swastikas and Hitler and stuff like that, so you fought the Stadt Meister Meisterstadt. Yes. <laughs> of, you know he whatever we had to get it out and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then you know we could kind of get back to it. Work on Doom. Started again after that three week. Like what the hell? <laughs> um, and then, uh, and then, I was working on that E1 M2 level, and uh, and I made this this thing here, which is like a, you know, it looks kind of innocent. It's this, it's this, uh, these stairs that kind of go down. But the way that the code was structured. It caused a recursion problem when John was traversing what his sector list uh, internal data structure. Um, it slowed the game way down because it was looking into something that had to go in and out of a list recursively, and the game super started chugging. And, uh, and he, you know, he liked the way that the game was starting to look, so he was he he wanted to fix the problem instead of hey, just draw a bunch of blocks. Yeah, so that so. that was that was the the cool moment there because like. I sat there, was given constraints, and 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 said, you know, well, I'll do the best I can with these, you know, sort of blockish things. And John just said, hey, this looks cool. Screw you, make your tech cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fix the engine, dude. <laughs> this well, I mean, is really that's, cool that's, looking. That's the great part of the tension of a, a team of great people is is that the ability to do that. So, uh, so you know, the 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 way that he was storing the sectors internally and traversing through them wasn't any kind of rocket science or anything, but that. That's kind of why this we, we hit this problem with this with this uh, this this area of the level. So basically, John had to fix the problem, and so he started reading up, and uh, and then the BS tree uh, the BSP tree was born. Um, this was based off of work by a guy in the audience here, named Bruce Naylor, and uh, and he had researched this for uh, I think it was backface culling off of 3D models. And John had read a white paper on it and decided, hey, I could use that, you know, into basically that culling algorithm to call out uh, non-visible sectors inside of a inside of a level. So he adapted that algorithm into the engine, and it was instantaneous. You know, it's, it's awesome. super fast, and that it was, was that was great. So John uh, Carmack was impressed, you know, about like this looks really cool, and he could see that, and that's what led him to technology. Yeah, so. and that and that was great because the whole industry has been using BSPs now for a very long time. Couple decades, I think. Uh, well, since then, almost. Um, so then it, we 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 get to April, and uh, we work on another alpha. We kind of get another alpha out there. Um, this is like some of the text. I don't know if you guys can read it, but this is some of the text out of the README file that we always put in all of our deliverables that we kind of send out. And these were just sent out to like beta testers that we've known for years. So it was just a few people that we sent these to. Um, but we kind of reached what we felt was uh, an alpha milestone. People, so people this is called like uh, football or push wall and fruit basket. Yeah, actually, <laughs> that's the name of the some of the two testers. testers. <laughs> um, 
So we're using a, a DOS extender to take take advantage of four megabytes of memory, uh, so we're not limited to the lower 640K. And down at the bottom left, you can see the little two dots. That's kind of our frame rate counter down at the bottom, uh, since we didn't want to put a big number on the screen. Hey, man, if this gets out, you can all kiss your autograph doom. <laughs> and books goodbye. <laughs> um, so, uh, so you can explain the yeah. business. So this room is a little more sort of a story-based thing. Uh, when, like, Doom was a great game with sort of, uh, you know, things jumping out at you and just pure, you know, raw experience, which was brilliant about it. Uh, at this point, my, my thought about it was, hey, there's, you know, speaking of aliens, uh, what Jim Cameron did that was so great is he showed you just at the start of the movie, there's all these uh, people's transponders in this one place over there. And your journey is towards that, so you have a deeper and deeper and deeper sense of dread as you head to it. And so that was the very, very small, simple story I was trying to inject on there is just that sense of, of deeper dread underneath the, the scary sort of experience. But as you know, it's kind of boxy right now in this version. Yeah, this is one of the early boxy, hey, do military boxy room kind of stuff. And, <laughs> and that's why you can see it's... Yeah, and, and at that time we had to, you know, we're trying to find a texture style and stuff. So the, the silvery cool one was like kind of realistic looking. It was kind of a really interesting... More spacey. Yeah, more spacey and kind of cool and, and the stone and stuff. So we kind of stuck with what was, what was okay to do. This was uh, E1M7. Yep. And, uh, you know, there might be some people out there... Yeah, that, that have played E1M7 a million times. This is this is like the really early version of E1M7. So if you play the level a lot, you totally know where where mm -hmm. you're at in here. But how different it is from the actual yeah. release game. This is a lot of uh, still using these limited amount of textures. We didn't have that many textures back then because we kind of were dumping a lot of effort into the the modeling and the texturing or the um, the characters having to pixel, you know, basically do pixel editing of the characters, cleaning up all the frames, and that was a lot of work to, to clean those guys up. And it's the weekend here, so there's none of the demons are there. You know, <laughs> taking some time off, knocking one back. That's, uh, yeah, the end of E1M2, or that's E1M6. Um, a lot of, uh, you can see I was playing around here with actually uh, the, I did all the programming of, of everything that happens in the environment in the game. So all the flashing lights, the stairs, the platforms, the switches, all that stuff, I was, I was coding all of that and uh, in testing it in my levels. So like, while I'm making the levels, I'm testing the functionality of the levels at the same time with the cool features like, hey, it'd be cool if this, you know, there's some lockers. <laughs> it'd be really cool. There's some demons in the shower here. Uh, that's what that's supposed to be. You know, you get dirty, you know, killing and maiming and all that stuff. <laughs> Consigning souls to hell and all that stuff. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, at this point, I'm I'm very glad he was doing uh, uh, some of the gameplay stuff right now because sometimes it's difficult to get gameplay stuff in uh, in sort of a technical focused uh, company. Uh, so I really wanted teleporters in the game. Teleporters were my new push wall. So I like stole one of Adrian's graphics and I colorized it red and I stole, then stole his metal texture and put bands around it and I said, here, can you make this teleport to another one of these somewhere else in the level? Yeah. And it's like, okay. <laughs> so that was awesome. You know, I was like, I'm free. I can make all, I can go over here and do special rooms and all. It was, it was, a, it was nice to be able to do that. So it was non-snappy. Yeah. Yeah, this was, this was um, basically E1M2 and uh, I think that's, that's probably the end of that video. Um, yeah, we had like little signs and stuff in there. That, you know, these are real early signs that don't don't just exist like in the finished yeah, game. programmer art or designer or whatever. <laughs> it was programmer art. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dark Hall. There's there's the uh, exit. Why why with a Q? Q, Q. <laughs> um, yeah, these, that's basically everyone that was in the company at that time. At the very bottom there. Um, so it was a pretty small team, and. Uh, uh, and then we get to May of 1993, and so we put out another uh, we put out another pre-beta. Um, I don't think that this is like maybe a minute, um, but we you know we're we're improving the game, we're making new builds. It's uh, it's funny that they're not out all over the place, uh, so it's good to get the video here. Um, so we were like, this is getting more real. We got a lot more textures in this. 
Uh, you can see the, 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 the UI at the bottom has totally changed up. We're just playing around with new things. We have a font. You know, yeah, now there's a menu <laughs> system. And, and, uh, and uh, you can, so we took some, like, so those little markers on the side that are kind of taken from uh, Wolfenstein. Um, but we basically are trying to kind of fill out the menu system so we can program some stuff in there, uh, some more functionality so we don't have to, like, put, you know, command line parameters to enable functionality. Uh, we got our skill levels in there because we need to put stuff in, in the levels. Like, while we're making the levels, we got to be able to put, you know, monsters of varying difficulty in there. So, like, now we're getting more, um, you know, just kind of more of the game, more of the game uh, actually going. So, yeah, you can see they just disappear <laughs> now, but hey, you can shoot them. <laughs> Pop! You can shoot the, you shoot the de demons, they disappear, you know, not fun, but, you know, at least it's working. And uh, in this, so yeah, I think this was pretty much the, the whole thing, this little bitty level. But it gave us a lot more textures, some shooting, new UI, menu system. So we're kind of dumping a whole bunch of stuff in there with just, uh, there's just two, two of us programming at that time, just me and John. Um, but the artists are doing a lot of work redoing, you know, the bullet clips and the armor and, you know, the artifacts that you pick up. Because in, in the game, you actually were picking up a lot of artifacts. It was keeping track of items that you picked up, even all the way until October. Um, so uh, eventually decided that that was not going to be a, a fun thing to do, picking up all these items. We were doing that in Wolfenstein, but it wasn't something that kind of fit inside this game. And there's, uh, I think that's Tom's. Yeah, that's, uh, you think that? I think that Adrian did that, I'm pretty yeah. sure. That's, that sort of bespeaks sort of to the original One World design being like turned into like map that you go through. Yes, we are at June. <laughs> Uh, in June, uh, we, I think Jay had talked to Computer Gaming World, which was the really cool magazine back there for PC games. And so a guy named Chris Lombardi came out, and he did a preview of Doom. It was a two-pager. This is just one of them. And, uh, and he did a really great job on this preview, um, sneak peek. And, uh, and so they actually, in this issue of, the, of uh, CGW, they did two previews. One was called Companions of Xanth, and one was Doom. And... Uh, and they got Companions of Xanth on the cover um, with a kind of a mention of Doom on it. So that was really cool that we actually got our, ourselves mentioned on the cover of a magazine, finally. Uh, the first time that we actually got any kind of press was, I think, on the phone after Wolfenstein. We did, like, a radio interview with somebody. And so that was really exciting. And random. <laughs> yeah, and so it was cool to see, you know, the first time that Doom was in something. Uh, we're right in the middle of development. Um, so now July... Hits. Yeah, and uh, at this time, uh, you see, notice Doom has a lot of variety in monsters. At this time, uh, or like a month before, there were, was nothing flying. There was a bunch of guys going, you know, and shooting stuff at you, throwing stuff at you, coming and destroying you and stuff like that. And again, it was sort of a fight to say, you know, I, there needs to be something flying. I realize, you know, this is fake 3D and stuff, but there needs to be something flying, something that can come down at me, you know, something that doesn't have to be be on the same path that I am, you know, something that can come up and, you know, scare the crap out of you. And <laughs> finally, after a, a lot of effort, then finally we got a, uh, the, the flying skulls and things like that. So. But it was kind of a fight. Yeah. And uh, that kind of led to another little snap in my my happiness, like trying to, you know, this should be obvious, you know, why why can't we just, you know, do this and that's cool. So, anyway, so at that time, there's like id and there's uh, me and there's a circle of, you know, people having fun and really uh, loving what they do and talking to each other and I'm kind of like isolated and alone like the sad clown. <laughs> 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 so yeah, it, Tom, Tom wanted more creativity. Things were getting optimized out of the design, yeah. and uh, and so we kind of felt that Tom's mm -hmm. vision was kind of too much for what we were trying to boil the game down to, which is pure speed, demons, yeah. keys, doors. Yeah. Since know. it's scary dark fast, I, things like I I wanted were like environment dangers, you know, things that were different from you know a bunch of hallways and green slime and stuff like that. And in the end, it's just like well, you know, like. It's difficult to be, the thing was a, a pure thing, and it's difficult to be on the fifth version of the same thing, and it seems they've done a few more of those, uh, <laughs> yes. that you just want to you know, get your creative yayas out. And uh, so 
think he was kind of ahead of the design game where we're trying to yeah, you know, considering I was, the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> considering I was uh, making trees out of like green blocks, I was kind of <laughs> like, you know, I was ready to explode. So, so then we get to August, and so then Tom leaves. We depart. Uh, we parted ways, and we sort of had a meeting, and just like parted ways, and. After the meeting, I felt a, a deep sense of relief because this thing is like uh, just sort of been eating at me and been unhappy and not not getting my creative juices out, and that led me to the the realization that all like all of us wanted was creative happiness. Creative happiness always wins, and it will make things sort out. So Carmack wanted creative his technical creative happiness and to to do what he wanted to do. John had found in creative happiness. You know, he's getting to do a lot more design, you know, that is brilliant at instead of just like being hampered by tools and stuff like that. And this allowed me to get out. Unfortunately, uh, I kind of did Rise of Triad, which a number of people like, uh, but it was sort of like Wolfenstein 1.5, you know. <laughs> and I, I, I'm really proud of the death match. The death match has incredible, like crazy things going on, drunk missiles, you know, and flame walls and stuff. Uh, and actually, there's an inside story. Um, the God mode of Rise of the Triad is actually something John did while no <laughs> clipping through walls in Wolfenstein. It's because he would sit there and he'd turn no clip on to like go look at a different room or something, and then he'd just kind of go, ooh, like he's move. I am moving <laughs> through walls. I will destroy you all. So that kind of turned into to uh, God mode, the and they're like, ooh, <laughs> I will destroy you. All. Kind of an inside joke, <laughs> uh, but but the thing the thing I want to get the point I want to make about that though is did rise the triad, but then uh, eventually years later I did get to get my creative yayas completely out uh, with an Acronox, which is a space game which had characters, which really told uh, had a really sense of space and and I'm really proud of the writing and the experience of that. So yeah, Tom actually was was uh, developing Prey after Rise of the Triad. And he left uh, 3D Realms. They kind of renamed themselves. Yeah. He left 3D Realms uh, while he was on Prey to help uh, start up Iron Storm so he could make Anachronox, his giant RPG. Yeah, Prey was, Prey was an interesting project. I had sort of an interesting thing that uh, kind of showed up a little bit in Anachronox, but it's a series of combined classes you know, that each kind of contribute to each other. There's three primaries and two, two that add to each other. And uh, But... Uh, that just wasn't creatively working out, and the, the team wasn't really happy with it either, the way things were going. Uh, the one thing that I do, do like that is in Prey is grab paths, so you can just walk up the wall. I had the, the very perfect image originally in Prey of being able to go like this and throw a grenade and have it bounce on the ceiling like that and wait for somebody to shoot <laughs> like that. So it would be a great deathmatch kind of thing. Anyway. So then, and uh, in so then, yeah. So then, Tom goes, and eventually he does an Acronox. But during this time, Tom's gone. Uh, Tom was creative director, and he was on the project for ten months. And now there's a void, and so we need to hire some other people because I'm not going to finish doing all the levels myself because um, I still had you know programming to do in the game and and, and everything. But else. you know, I just did one, wanted to say one more thing, and that can you stand over here all and right. point your mic at me. <laughs> I just wanted. Oh yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to say that I am proud to have worked on Doom, and after uh, 18 <laughs> some years, I can uh, wear this shirt and uh, say that you know I wrote it. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah, that'll be uh, 20 bucks for another shirt to come off, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> we actually made uh, Wolfenstein shirts that way as well. So Wolfenstein 3D wrote it, and then we did a bunch of the Doom ones while we were making the game. Uh, it's pretty funny. So Yeah, yeah actually, we uh, came up with, uh, I think I, I did the, the wrote it shirts, and then I did the go to hell ad. And then, like, Apple did these really simple couple word ads. I think they stole it from me personally. But. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so so now we have to hire some new people, right? So uh, we just hired two more people to replace Tom. <laughs> Dave Taylor. Everybody knows Dave, hopefully. 
Um, and then the legendary Sandy Peterson, who uh, was uh, working with Chaosium on Call of Cthulhu and a bunch of other stuff. So he was a well-known designer back then. Um, so then uh, these guys jump on the game. Sandy is taking over Tom's design work. Dave is, is doing a lot of programming for us to get the game out. You know, we get into September. Um, we're making a lot of progress on the auto map. Uh, lots of levels are getting done uh, in the style of game levels back then. And uh, we get the DMX sound drivers. Uh, we, we didn't have enough bandwidth to do the sound drivers ourselves. So we actually uh, had a guy named Paul Radek. Uh, he wrote the sound drivers that he was licensing out. So Dave got those hooked into the game. So we could actually get sound effects and everything. Um, in October, we finally get another build of the game. Uh, it's a pre-release. And, uh, and it's getting close. You know, We're only, uh, I think, what, two months away from release at this point. So um, so the game's looking better. You can see way more textures in it. The lighting's better. We had a lot more time to, uh, to make more of an environment in this game. So this doesn't have the sound effects in it because it would be annoying. <laughs> but, uh, but you can see uh, how much more work's been done to that really simple level. And it does take a lot of time when you're making levels to just keep going over and over the same area in refining your texture alignment and your lighting and your effects and your placement and everything that you're trying to do in these things. Uh, making a great level requires a, a ton of iteration and a ton of play. You need to play your own level. And so I play these things a lot. And th like th this isn't even the final version of it because there's no lift there in the final, in the final game. Um, you can see that uh, even the sky is different. Uh, that's like trying to be realistic it looks like, uh, you know, you're on Phobos and there's space above the mountains, which, sure, space would be black like that, but it doesn't look that good. You know, the black, a black void like that doesn't, uh, it doesn't feel as good as something that has, has more light. So we kind of made it, we, we changed the, the final, the final, uh, the final sky to actually be light colored. So the level actually felt a lot better. Yeah, if you put, like, stars in there, they would kind of alias or something with a... Yeah, they would drop out and kind of look sampley. Um, you can see that we're picking up items, we're keeping track of items, and next to the Doom Guy's head we have the lives. So uh, we still had those kind of things in the game. Uh, even at the intermission screen, it was keeping track of you know, your rewards for items that you picked up and stuff. But we, I basically just didn't think that, um, like this was a, this is like, I felt like this is a pretty modern game. Let's get rid of the, the things that arcade games had in them. Uh, so. I didn't like the idea that uh, that you would have to have lives and like you could end the game and kind of get really mad because you tried really hard to get through like E2M5 or something. So I got rid of the idea of uh, lives and if you get killed, you just go back to the beginning of the level infinitely as much as, as as much as you want. And we have a save load feature in the game where you can save it at any second while you're playing it and reload it instantly. So it would be you know it, it's, there's a high probability that players will be able to actually finish the game and get through it. Um, so you can see here, uh, walking through E1M2, uh, how much different it is. You can see that these fireballs from, from these guys is still, I think it's Tom's art. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the little fireballs that they're throwing is old. Um, but at least you can see the game getting, getting uh, more done. And really, the next step past this point was the final game. It was just the next revision of all of these little layers of graphics and, and uh, level design and menu systems. and and stuff like that. So you can see, I uh, actually had to run a TSR program called Fake, Fake Date to, to allow me to record the demo because we had a, a, a time-locked press release version <laughs> that we sent out. So, you know, uh, it's hard to say. I don't, I don't think you can set the date manually inside of DOSBox. Um, so going forward, November was like, okay, we're at the very end. We've got to hurry up and get this game done. So we're all doing final polish work on it. So a lot got done. The first IPX multiplayer um, in a game was created, like a fast shooter game. Uh, the word deathmatch is created. Uh, came up with that just while I was thinking about, you know, what kind of mode that would be. We put co-op in there because it just seemed obvious that you'd want to go through the, the game together with friends. Um, we finished all of the the, the, the extra 10% of the game that it takes to really make it feel polished. Um, and then we got, you know, modems working and all the game maps were modified to handle all the game modes that we had with all the difficulty levels and everything. So it was really just tons of polish at the very, very end. 
um, and we were spending more and more time at the office. The uh, Usenet was going crazy because everybody knew the game was going at, coming out for a whole year, so they were inventing all kinds of stories and, and uh, new um, games based off of cheat codes that we had. And you know, it was actually the internet created some cheat codes. Uh, so it was it was just like really furious at the very end. That last November December um, was 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 pretty crazy. Um, and then basically that was the, December 10th is the day that we are putting the game up on the net. We had a 30 hour stretch at the very end of uh, no sleep, 30 hours. Everybody just running the game on every machine. Um, we had a uh, last minute bug that was like. <laughs> It was a really crazy bug that uh, only if you knew everything about the technology would you know how to debug. But basically, uh, the game runs on a timer. So even in the future, with you know 50, megahertz, 50 gigahertz processors, this game will always run at the, at the correct speed. Um, but in doing that, using the timer at, the, at a low level, uh, interrupt level, basically, if the timer starts at some crazy random value when the game starts, there's a possibility that it could hit zero, and at that point, the game just locks up. So we sometimes saw the game running on a bunch of machines and it would just randomly lock up for no reason at all, and, uh, and only, only uh, Carmack could figure out that it was the timer code that was wrapping when that happened. So fix that bug, and then it never, you know, that was just like during that last time, uh, fixing that bug, and it was the last thing that we had in the game. And so and ironically, Doom is uploaded to my college yeah. <laughs> computers, University of Wisconsin. To upload the game to the college, uh, University of Wisconsin's <laughs> FTP server, and everyone was waiting for it. So we had to, um, you know, we had to try and get in there, get a slot in there to do an upload, which is what we did. And so, um, you know, we were using a modem and <laughs> putting the game up, and uh, <laughs> totally couldn't hear. And it blew up the whole server. <laughs> And, uh, and then we had to get on the phone with the sysop of the, of the FTP server, and then we had to have him kick everybody off, and then we had to slot in again because we had hundreds of people trying to get onto the server to get the game, and we couldn't even get the game up on the server because they were sitting there. And then it blew up again. So the second time the game blew up, and, and, uh, and then basically had to tell him to just lock everybody off so we could just upload it. And so he did that. And now Bucky's happy. And then yeah. the game was uploaded. <laughs> Uploaded to the world and made its way across all the BBSs, and uh, you know everybody knows the rest of the story. Um, we went on to make Doom 2 and Quake, and, and that, weirdly, uh, level 10 of Doom 2 is mine. I actually got it and was just playing, and I was like, "What the the diamonds? I'm, what that?" <laughs> it was a funny moment. And yep. so that's it. That's the story of how we made Doom. Um, <laughs> thanks, everyone. We can do uh, well. Questions. First of all, I would like it to. This is an odd job, and really like to thank everybody that like gets the games and downloads them because you're just kind of like sitting in a room doing like this thing because you like to play it. You know, it's like I want to play that thing, and then all of a sudden, oh, this is really great. It's like I, you know, okay, <laughs> nice to meet you. I don't know how this happened, but it's it's kind of cool. So questions, uh, anybody has questions? Uh, it would be Five great minutes. to hit, hit a microphone so, so everyone can hear it. Uh, so to me, one of the sort of most interesting dynamics in Doom was the uh, variety and sort of enemy attacks um, and just sort of the timings of them and so on. I was curious as to kind of where along the process or how much, did they come out the way you'd planned or was there a lot of change throughout in terms of like fireball speeds and enemy run speeds and shotgun timing and whatnot. Um, yeah, everything in the game was totally iterated on like heavily. We had, made, you know, we made really best first guesses. Uh, the game in the, the game frame rate, the, the rendering rate was locked at 35 frames a second, even though it could probably go 70. We made it 35 so the rest of the, the, the game would run evenly on more systems and that the, uh, and we ran the internal AI at 10 frames a second so we would have a, a good a good speed for the enemies. We don't want them coming too fast because it's just not very fair or fun. So uh, we put first guess values in for everything, the damage, uh, how the damage scales on weapons, the weapon firing rates, how much per second damage that could possibly be um, to try and perfectly balance all the weapons so 
you know, what you were having to decide was if something's really far away, you want to use not the shotgun. <laughs> and if something is, is uh, big, you want to use the rocket launcher and, and uh, stuff that's really far away, use the pistol or the chain gun. Uh, so we, we, we did a ton of balancing on that to try and kind of even out the damages and the times that they would fire. And we, and, and, uh, I'd have to say it just felt perfect, uh, you know, even, even years later when we played Deathmatch in other games and come back to it, it just, it's, it just, we got really lucky balancing, uh, all the damage. Thank you. I can't see you over there. I guess there's a hand over there. Hi. Hi there. Um, so now ah. that the game is, well, the game has been finished for a while and ported for a lot of systems, do you guys go back and think that there was any element that you want to change? And also, which port do you think is the best and the most best representation of the game? Um, I, don't, I, I don't have anything that I want to change other than, you know, uh, it, I, would, I would go over the levels probably and just do some more polish on the levels. Um, but they really, they, they, they feel great, and uh, I think the game is, I, I really don't have any, like, I don't look back at it and go, oh, man, that was really messed up. Like, in, you know, with Quake, there was, there was some damages with the rocket launcher I would probably change, but, uh, but with Doom, it just seemed right. Um, Him? Yeah. He's got one, one more minute. question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hello, I'm Carlos. Uh, first of all, thanks for coming. Uh, thanks. I recently read Masters of Doom, and uh, it reminded me of uh, kind of like a, when I was growing up, like the image that people had of John Romero, like, you know, someone that was very excited, very passionate about what he was doing. Uh, one of the things that I thought about was how you guys always wanted to make, like, the best games around you. You wanted to compete with the greatest, and you wanted to break new ground and, you know, make the, you know, use, like, Carmack's technology and apply it in design in ways that nobody had seen before. Um, and you then, when you disagree with, uh, I think it, I, I saw a YouTube uh, interview with Matt, like Matt Chat. Matt Chat, yeah. Yeah, where you uh, dis you say you disagree with uh, some of the decisions that were made in Quake, and you ended up, you know, doing your own thing, and you still wanted to, you know, make your own, you know, great first-person shooter and your your vision of it. Right. Um, so, as a creator, what made you transition from, you know, that passion towards, say, AAA games, towards a different focus now, towards, a, say, social space? Um, well, I. I Played Deathmatch like constantly for years and love Deathmatch. I really, Deathmatch is like one of the most fun, uh, ways to play a game for me. Um, but nowadays going into the, uh, into the, the latest games, they're not, they don't feel the same way. They feel like, I feel like I'm going slower through the world and I really like the Doom and Quake speeds of, you know, player run. It felt like uh, they're more skill based than, you know, like, uh, than, than just like aiming. At somebody with a with a railgun, um, not not as much fun for me. Uh, and uh, and as a designer, uh, it's way more challenging to make a game that you know hundreds of millions of people will like. Uh, like say social games, it's much more of a challenge to try and uh, get back to what you know the roots of, of what's fun and to make it palatable to way more people. Um, so I still I still have some really great ideas for some shooters that I'd like to make, um, but right now. Um, you know, I've, I've moved through, we both moved through a lot of yeah. different kinds of designs in, in our careers, and, and uh, it's fun to touch a lot of different areas. Well, I think, I think John's genius is seeing the, the, the next thing, and, and it, perhaps the timing has been off occasionally, but when Carmack and I made a joke first level of Super Mario and left it on John's desk, he closed the door when we came in after, you know, crashing and stuff, and he says, we are out of here. <laughs> <laughs> he knew it. They said, "This is it. We're out of here." Boom! This is, this is a success. It was scrolling. And yeah, with the tile scrolling stuff. And when uh, we did Monkey Stone together, it's like it was a very early cell thing. The cell carriers didn't really have it together as far as games, but that's that's the biggest thing now is you know mobile games and stuff. So it's brilliant. A little early on that one, and uh, now it's striking the forefront again with social games and, and sharing it with Brenda, the brilliant Brenda. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. I think that's it for questions because we have to run to another talk. Yes. Thanks, everybody.